Hey everybody, welcome. This is Mr. V and this is Apes Review Video Topic 8.2, Human Impacts on Ecosystems. So we began talking about water pollution um, and land pollution here. And one of the things we want to mention, and this kind of goes back to our previous units, is range of tolerance. So recall that organisms have to have certain ranges to survive. They need to be able to grow, reproduce, and they need certain ranges of things like uh, pH, uh, water temperature, things like that. And so when they're pushed out of those ranges, you're going to get stress, or in the event of being pushed too far, you're going to end up with death of the organism, right? So for example, if you think about coral reefs, right? Coral reefs are facing many different um, challenges, and those can be things like rising temperatures, sediment runoff, destructive uh, fishing practices, and acidification, which are things we'll talk about uh, later on. But those are going to be those different things that are going to push that range of ecosystem just out of normal uh, normal conditions. And so a good example of this is an oil spill, right? Oil spills um, can affect different aquatic ecosystems. You get, of course, the hydrocarbons in the oil. And then um, when an animal like this uh, pelican is uh, drowned in oil like this, their temperature regulation gets affected. And so, um, and then of course, the species on the bottom are going to be clouded out and they're going to die. And so make sure you understand the ecosystem portion, but then also understand there's also an economic consequence when it comes to this. So when we see economics, that's going to be something that ends up coming as part of uh, your FRQs specifically. They may ask you about the ecosystems or habitat, and then they may ask you about the economic. In that case, you want to talk about money and jobs. So make sure you're clear that fishing and tourism are going to be impacted as well. And then, of course, here's another example is you get dead zones. So we'll cover this more in depth in, in future um, PowerPoints, but um, dead zones are going to be where you have nutrients coming up in large quantities, and that's going to cause an alpha bloom, and that leads to eventual drop in oxygen, and that's going to lead to a dead zone. So a classic case of this is the Gulf of Mexico, where there is a massive area of dead zone because of all those nutrients coming in from the Mississippi River. And so we'll cover this in much more depth later, but that's something to be aware of on human impacts. And then so here's a big one as well, something called the oxygen sag curve. This is the idea that um, we can measure dissolved oxygen, that's how much water, how much oxygen is in the water, and we can measure BOD, which is the demand needed by those organisms. Okay. And so at a point of pollution, when that occurs, you're going to end up with a rise in the demand needed right? And then you're going to end up with a drop in the dissolved oxygen available. So that gap is going to be a major problem. And that's usually right after a point source. And then as you move further away from that gap, you end up with uh, that issue clearing up eventually. So it's not something that clears up right away. It does end up clearing out eventually. Um, and that's what we call the oxygen sag curve. So make sure you're familiar with this as it may be a part of, uh, it may be a part of your uh, AP exam on uh, multiple choice or for your response questions. And then of course you get other pollutants such as heavy metals, litter, and sediments, and those can end up um, affecting the ecosystems in many different ways. You know, in case in this case you see a sea turtle um, where they eat jellyfish and plastic bags uh, may end up uh, being substituted or being uh, considered as jellyfish, and then the sea turtles will end up with a blockage and things like that. And so that's going to be many different ways. And also uh, pollutants may actually gather uh, toxic substances. And so even though they may not choke on the plastic, the plastic may end up poisoning them anyway. So definitely something to be looking at. And then, of course, we look at mercury. And that's something that comes from coal mines. So when coal is burned, that ends up releasing mercury into the atmosphere. And it falls down into the water. And that ends up becoming methyl mercury, where it ends up attached to CH3. And so... This will then accumulate and then magnify in the species, which we'll go over that in a separate uh, PowerPoint as well. So make sure you're uh, looking out for that, biomagnification and accumulation. And here's some sources and links to help you out with those. Hopefully these will be helpful and hopefully this was helpful. Thank you.